Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for your time. I'm coming from the unceded lands of the Yugambeh and Kombumeri peoples, and I'm most grateful to the RSC Organising Committee for giving me time to speak. I have many words to share, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit of my story. I enrolled at the University of Sydney in 1995 and well and truly became part of the furniture as I did not leave there till 2005. After getting my PhD there in 2004, I went to the University of New South Wales and didn't leave there till 2014 with a finished postdoc. And I only moved to Queensland on account of a lovely man that I had met who came with three little people. In migrating north, I worked at Griffith University until 2020, when I took a voluntary redundancy package because of the COVID-19 pandemic and used all $100,000 of it to build Scholar Freedom. To say I believe in research is an understatement, but about 20 years ago, I felt the winds change and they were cold. At that time, in 2004, I didn't get a permanent job that I was already doing casually because I didn't have enough publications. No one had told me that that's what I needed to do because it had only just become a thing. I was teaching first-year psychology cohorts of between 1,500 and 1,800 students and getting near-perfect evaluation scores, but this didn't matter anymore. It just got worse from there. We all know how competitive and difficult and unkind the higher education sector has become. Everything became about money. Knowledge became big business. When I eyeballed the list of topics to make a submission to this conference, I was like, oh, which one do I pick? I can talk about all of them. Do I pick open access, prestige metrics, peer review, paper mills? I went with gatekeeping. Because if we anchor this conversation in academic freedom, then the other issues make sense. So I'm going to take you now to 2017. I submitted a future fellowship application to the ARC. I didn't get it, but that's fine. The chances of that happening were like 30%. But if I did get it, it was going to finally give me a salary that was commensurate with my experience and allow me to do research on things that matter. The lack of success was not the problem. It was the number of hoops I had to jump through just to submit the application. Nearly 15 research centre directors and deputy vice chancellors and all sorts of other bigwigs said, your publication profile is too small. We're not going to submit it. It didn't matter how much I said, but I'm part time. I've got four kids. Pro rata. This list is excellent. They knew my list wasn't 15 million pages long and so was unlikely to be successful. I believed in the work so much that I did some of it on the research hours of my normal contract, but then the manuscripts with those results were collectively rejected 65 times by journals. Part of why my track record looked low to these decision makers was because of how hard it had always been for me to publish my research. And I taught research methods to more than 10,000 university students and had worked for nearly a decade in a research centre. I knew what the principles of good research were and was committed to them. So it wasn't because my work was crap. It was because there was always someone in power deciding if my work was allowed to be seen and therefore how much my labour was worth. In 2017, I also wrote a book. 
the publisher emailed me a few years later saying, we're making great sales from your great work. If you pay us £2,000 to make it open access, that'll be better for you because more people will read it. Do you know, I actually considered it. I'm on a part-time wage and the breadwinner of a six-person household and the carrot of maybe another citation that maybe might get me a grant, that maybe might get me a promotion, was something I had become hostage to. Excuse me, I Pooja. Had to, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. We're just coming up to five minutes. I've only got one paragraph left. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I had lost all agency and power. It's a sickening way to live. Academics are very unhappy and very unwell. Nothing short of system reform is required, which of course requires partnerships. Researchers have lots of great ideas and if the market was filled with scholar-led publishers who know how to fix their problems, that would be amazing because it would decentralise power from the big five publishers currently making $28 billion in profits per year from the blood, sweat and tears of people like me. An H-index does not put food on the table and I am literal when I use those words. I'm a tiny cog in a massive machine, but lots of tiny cogs can screech the wheels. That is my dream. Thank you.